we recognize several phenotypes of rhinitis. First of all, as a clinician, we make the distinction between allergic rhinitis, infectious rhinitis, and a large group of patients with so-called non-allergic, non-infectious rhinitis. These forms of rhinitis can then be distinguished based on the duration of disease, based on the severity of disease, based on other clinical parameters like level of control, the presence of comorbidities, and other clinical parameters that we can think of. So there are several clinical phenotypes uh, that determine uh, the rhinitis patient profile. You should realize that the symptoms that are seen in patients with rhinitis or actually nasal obstruction, rhinorrhea, runny nose, sneezing salvos, and itchy nose and itchy eyes. And that we define rhinitis as the presence of two of these symptoms, at least in a patient lasting for more than one hour a day. These symptoms may have underlying mechanisms that are responsible for the induction and development of symptoms. And there can be the classic infectious pathway, like in patients with common cold. This is a pathway where we have specific inflammatory cells and specific inflammatory mediators being responsible for the induction of symptoms. And this is classically called the T helper 1 type pathway of rhinitis. This is a clinical endotype that is actually um, self-limiting and that is not so much subject to research. Besides that, we have the T helper 2 endotype, which is the endotype of patients with allergic rhinitis. We know that in patients with allergic rhinitis, the T helper cells that are present in the nasal mucosa produce cytokines that trigger immunoglobulin production against allergens that are present in the air. So patients inhale these allergens and upon inhalation of these allergens, there is actually the induction of an inflammatory cascade or the uh, activation of an inflammatory cascade that is giving rise to the symptoms. And recently, we defined another endotype of rhinitis, which is more the neurogenic pathway involving the nerves in the nasal mucosa being responsible for the release of mediators that give rise to the symptoms of rhinitis, but also to nasal hyperreactivity. Nowadays, there's also a fourth endotype of rhinitis being recognized, which is linked to epithelial dysfunction. And epithelial dysfunction may have several meanings. It can be a lack of nasal epithelial integrity. It can be a lack of mucociliary activity and clearance of the environmental triggers that stimulate uh, the nasal mucosa and inflammation. Or it can also be linked to a dysfunctional chloride channel within the epithelium, giving rise to chronic upper airway inflammation. So with the European Academy of Allergy Clinical Immunology in association with the American Academy, we designed a consensus document on these endotypes, on the endotypes of rhinitis. And there we recognize these four endotypes.